All right, so now we're going to talk about uh, some additional sublayer controls. We've already talked about the levels. Now we're going to talk about a few more. Uh, in order to do that, I'm going to actually create a new layer. I'm going to turn off these two red ones that I created, and I'm actually just going to add a black layer of like, imagine just a, a black layer of paint over top of all this. Awesome. Um, now what I can do is I want to go ahead and create a black mask, and then I'm just going to add a, a map on here. I'll just add a grunge. Uh, we'll just add this old grunge map here to this. And now it can go ahead and increase the balance here, so you can kind of start to see that come in. So one of the things about um, these masks, is like they're great, but like, you know, what if what if I just want to add a little bit of softening to this, right? Like, we, you know, and, and I've said this a lot. So if I am, you know, using this map, and actually these areas, I want them to feel like they're maybe a little bit pushed out or pulled back down into the surface from the original. Like that's great, and it could really add a lot of nice like micro detail to the whole thing. But the problem is, is like, you can kind of see it here. It looks a little bit pixelated and weird. So what I want to do is I just want to add a little bit of blur to this, to this map. So what I'm going to do is go into the map, um, select the little magic wand. And now you can see that there's actually a uh, add filter button here. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And again, it's like the generator. Nothing actually happens because we haven't actually selected our filter yet. So for this one, I'm going to go in and I'm going to select our blur node, which is for again for me the most common one that I'll be using. And then it's it's you know it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's just the amount of blur that you'll be adding to it. So it's just a, a numeric value that you can slide up and down depending on how much you want to blur this stuff. But again, just like adding just like a real subtle amount of blur to this can really help it feel a little bit more realistic. Um, some other ones that you can kind of explore there too. Uh, that I really like are, uh, I'm going to go in here and I'm actually going to take off the mask because you can actually apply some filters directly to the layer as well. Like, so the same thing with levels and everything else. So if I actually want to go in here and add a filter, um, if you scroll down here, you can see things like, um, the, another one would be like the, the hue saturation level. So like if I had this base color was again, like a green. I could go into the to the levels here and actually increase the saturation, slightly change the hue around, decrease the lightness, and you can do that outside of the original uh, level as well. And there's there's some real benefits to that when you're layering things together. Like sometimes you just want to import uh, the color that was happening down below the layer, and then just like uh, slightly desaturating it or something like that. That could, that can be really really helpful. Um, and then additionally, you can do things like uh, add a filter. There's some really cool ones like you can do some, uh, this is the peeling paint. So I can add peeling paint. And now this is a nice little filter on top of it that acts as like peeling paint that's going back and you can change the distance of that. You can change, you know, whether or not there's some air bubbles mixed in there as well, um, which is which is really kind of a, a fun little um, tool as well. Uh, on top of that, we've also got things like you can glow, you can adjust the height, you can sharpen a mask if you want. And one other one that, that comes up a lot, and this one to me is a little bit unique to substance that I really like, is let's say I had a layer, and on this layer I just wanted to adjust the height, and I want to push it back down in. Um, inside this layer I actually want to create a black mask, and a paintbrush, and in my paintbrushes I just want to add a like a cracks one. And so normally what you can do is push this down in, got my paint layer. There you go. Now I can start painting just some cracks on here. One of the things that I really like is we have another filter on top of this called our slope blur. And I'll show you kind of what that does. So if we add a generator, I'm sorry, filter on top of this and we go to our blur slope, It actually kind of breaks this up in a, a slightly different way. And actually, it works really, really great for uh, things like cracked walls, cracked concrete, things like that. And so now what I can do is just kind of go through and paint on this. And you can see that, you know, kind of creates this like craggy surface a little bit, which I, I think is really, really beneficial. You can always go back in because of the, um, because of the, uh, non-destructive workflow and I can always make these little adjustments you can see if I do that it adds like more 
detail in there. It's all, the intensity slider is based on the an intensity divider. So I could, if I wanted to take that way down, you can see that it, now it's it's controlling at a more detailed level versus like at a hundred. It's like, now it's like super detailed. It's just a way of, of, it's really difficult for me to verbalize what exactly is happening, but hopefully you can see it and that it's just like breaking up that surface in a way that's kind of decimating it. That's not a normal blur. So it's a joke among the substance community that you can, you know, pretty much create anything that you want with a slope blur or that, you know, when, when all else play, fails, just slope blur it away. But, um, but that's a really powerful one too. So I would encourage you to check the documentation. If you want, it's up in the help documents uh, and documentation. If you want to see some of the other filters and stuff that we've got going on, but yeah, you can definitely feel free to check all these out. There's some just really, really cool ones that you can generate some unique looks for your project.